Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Dales Report podcast. I'm happy to be joined on the podcast once again here today. V. Bond Lee from St. John Carbon. Great to have you back on. How are things? Hi, Shad. I'm glad to be back again. Uh, yeah, we had some uh, great feedback from uh, last week's interview. But uh, needless to say, you've got obviously a great shareholder base and a big following. But uh, it's great to have you back on. How are things been? Uh, things have been good. You know, I've been concentrating on working with the team and you know, getting more batteries made at the plant and uh, just the day-to-day stuff. Uh, that's where I've been living. Yeah, that's good. Well, wanted to have you back on because we had, as you said, some great feedback based on last week's interview. And I know that you wanted to come back on and actually show some of your deck, which uh, creates more of a visual and comprehensive look. Um, as you know, obviously, uh, first things first, we need to obviously find out timeline-wise as to where this company has been uh, where we are today, where we're going to be in two to three years from now. So what I wanted to show, obviously, a lot of my viewers is kind of a, a template that walks people through where your vision is right now. So on this interview, what I was going to do is actually share my screen so you could take over. So why don't you bring up some of the charts that we want to talk about first with timeline. But before we get into that, let's at least show your disclaimer and your forward looking statement. This is our disclaimer and forward-looking statement. Uh, I'll leave this on the screen for about 30 seconds. So uh, yeah, this makes, your, read it. this makes your legal team happy, right? So yeah. we'll put this up. And then obviously next page, as I said, to uh, start things off, uh, we're focusing obviously on where this company has been, when it was like basically established, uh, where we are today, then obviously moving forward. So let's go to that timeline page. All right. Okay, so this uh, slide here, gives us a, a good perspective and context of where we are. Uh, the, the project actually started in 2014 with a, a university professor named Dr. Shang Wei Chen. Okay. Uh, Dr. Chen has about 400 publications in the field of uh, chemistry and, and battery and energy storage. So he had been working on this, this uh, design for about six years. Uh, in 2020, he successfully tested the coin cells, and that was the, uh, the data that we released uh, a couple months ago. In May, uh, St. John Carbon did a little bit of a, a study in terms of the types of battery technology that we wanted to acquire, and the solid state uh, came in at the top of our list every time we, we, we looked at the analysis. And so we acquired the company in 2021. Uh, Wei Chen is part of our board of directors, and he is yeah. also a, a leader in the, the effort to commercialize this technology. Uh, once we took over the company, we had uh, committed that we would commission a battery R&D facility before the end of the year. So we have just done that. Uh, that was announced in December. Now our next steps is now that we have facility is to start building some of these batteries to the technology that Shang Wei had developed. Okay. And that's where we're in right now. But when we look ahead further, uh, later on this year, we plan to test some of these batteries on consumer products. Uh, in my last meeting, we talked about a, a, uh, a drone, a small drone that would be a, a good application. And we're also now looking at other consumer product applications too as well. Once you develop a, a single layer cell, then the next step is to develop the multi-layer where you make the cell thicker, you wrap the layers around, and that enables you to develop a battery with more capacity. And then from there, once we develop multi-layer cells and the batteries are working to our expectation, then comes the production facility and the plan to manufacture these batteries in, in, in large amounts. All right, so that's timeline-wise. Mm -hmm. Next step. All right, so our technology, this... Uh, this chart shows the evolution of batteries over the last 30 years. Yeah. So we started off with like a, a, a lithium metal battery. Yep. And the, the thing to look at in this chart, and I'll just try to make it easy, is, is over the years, energy density has gone up mm -hmm. between one to 200 watt hour per kilogram to our technology, which is between three, 300 and 500 watt hour per kilogram. The size of the battery has also reduced. So you can see here, in our technology, we're proposing something smaller. We don't have the graphite anode here anymore. We have the lithium metal uh, collector. We have a, the same separate, well, a separator, and we use a cathode that is more traditional at this point. So I wanna ask, Global Lithium, 
um, battery capacity was 450 gigawatts per hour in 2020, and it's expected to rise to much as 2,800 gigawatts per hour by 2030 to accommodate, obviously, the need for power and uh, performance. So to achieve the extra capacity and new designs and innovations in battery technology is required, how is St. John Carbon tackling, I guess, the tech, uh, technical challenges uh, needed to bring, I guess, the next generation of lithium batteries to market? Well, fundamentally, uh, when you even when you look at this box here, uh, without the graphite, that's 15% by weight yeah. and an X amount by volume. So that enables us to get to higher energy density level. So, so it's, it's the size of the battery that matters too, as yeah. well as the chemistry. So this is basically a progression of battery technology. So the next page, I think actually there's something that you wanted to show me or did show me the other day that I thought was actually interesting, but this is actually a comparison to your current technology compared to say one of the leading competitors in the space, which is Quantumscape. And for those that don't know, this is a company that has a current valuation of $28 billion. So um, I'm curious to see how you can walk me through comparing, I guess, your technology compared to somebody like that, who's obviously right now viewed as a leader in the space. What, what we have here is a comparison of all the, the key things that are important to consumers and also you know, important to, to us to develop a product that is viable. So the first item here is charge rate. So uh, our leading competitors are advertising around 15 minutes. Uh, okay. We've tested our coin cells and we've seen numbers in the 10 minute range. Okay. Cycle life is important because that, that actually gives you an idea of how long your product is going to last and, and how many cycles you can cycle it before the battery starts losing its charge capacity. Mm -hmm. And so we're also in a pretty good spot here as well with our latest data. Uh, then the energy density, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the last call, uh, you're limited by materials and redox. And so we're, in the same ballpark as where everyone else is targeting for energy density. Although in the future, there will probably be more leaps and bounds when more technologies become available. But right now we're focusing on uh, something better than what we have in the industry today, but also competitive with our, with the people that we, with the companies that we compete with. So a lot and of in the last, I was going to say a lot of this information you're sharing is based on current performance and data that's been accumulated to this point, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the last item here is costs. Uh, we believe that our lower costs, our membrane is, is lower costs. It's composite. Uh, and we're looking also at ways now to fabricate that locally so that, you know, and it, it is fairly complex machinery that we have to bring in. Uh, so we're expecting that we'll be competitive in costs too as well. So within this chart, now you have everything that really affects a consumer. So when you, you pull into a gas station to either gas up, you charge a battery and you want to make sure that the time that you charge a battery is similar or equal to the time that you would fill up the gas tank. So uh, if I'm an investor and I'm looking at this, you know, put this two and two together and kind of educate me on how the industry, does a company like a Quantumscape and, and the size and value of that company look at say the pure technology platform as to what you're building out, especially with the research and development facility as well, to say this is a company that we need to eventually have within our portfolio. Just how does this work? Well, in terms of where, let's say, let's talk QuantumScape, they, they yep. have a solid state battery. Their talk technology is going to be quite different than ours. Uh, it won't be a hybrid like ours. So, uh, we're probably not on their radar, like if I, if I was kind of guessing here. Yeah. Um, you know, we might be on the radar of a, a, a company that's looking for maybe a, a slight disruption that could become very effective. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where our technology falls. Okay. Uh, we're, you know, we're seeing that the industry is also stabilizing a little more. There's more electric vehicles out there. Uh, it's it's stabilizing out in such a way where you're going to have a lot of cars built in this range of, of capacity. How, uh, how advanced do you see the electric car industry uh, progressing uh, in the next two to three years? 
I think there's going to be an advancement in, in, in every facet of electric vehicles. Yeah. You know, not just the batteries, but the, the motors and the gearboxes that they're paired with. Yeah. Uh, advancements in those will also enable, you know, batteries to last longer because they're going to be more efficient. There's going to be advancements also in the controls. So the controls for the batteries, uh, the battery management systems, and also the controls for the motors where these are typically uh, brushless motors. Uh, so they will need controls to, uh, to control the, the electric circuits that, that, that power these motors. So when you walk me through like the information that you've put out, um, your battery technology currently right now has a faster charge rate. Uh, it has a longer cycle life uh, and is lower cost than your competitors while maintaining similar energy output. So uh, based off of that, uh, do you believe this profile then gives you a competitive advantage in terms of, um, I guess, giving you the ability to jump from research and in development stage to say real world uh, battery applications? I, I think absolutely. So that's where we, we know what we have to do. Yeah. We, we have to get past the coin cell stage, which is why we built the plant. Yeah. Uh, we have to start building more and more of these batteries. We have to perfect the process. We have to uh, be able to repeatedly build these batteries to the level of quality and to the level of uh, performance that we're going to need to be successful. So what's that's the next why slide we have that, to plant. What, what, what's the next slide that you wanted to show me, Vibond? Oh, the, the next slide is just some of our coin cell data. We okay. had actually uh, uh, released this information uh, recently, but this was the coin cell data that uh, Dr. Chen had uh, uh, achieved through the testing of his coin cells. Okay. And what we're seeing here is that um, we can, you know, these batteries are retaining its capacity up to 80%, up to 3,000 charges. So how strong are these results compared to some of your uh, peer prototype results from what you've seen? Well, I think they're in the ballpark. I, are I'm, they? I'm not going to come out and say, you know, these are the best results in the world, but I think this is enough. This is a good result to say, let's continue this effort. Let's build bigger batteries. Let's build them in the pouch cells. Let's test them. Yeah. And once we can replicate this type of performance and exceed it, then we're going to be in an even better place. That's great. All right, and the last slide you wanted to show us? The last slide really is our, our plant that we built. Uh, you know, last year, this was just a field. Uh, so we, uh, we built a lab in, in this plant here. So the and facility also, is done, now the equipment is just filling up as we speak, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So we, we recently put in the prototype lab where we can fabricate the, the pouch cells. Uh, we have some plans to bring in some more testing equipment, uh, but we're operational now. There are people there and we're starting our batch builds of pouch cells. It's great. This has been kind of a better walkthrough, but I think, I think the uh, main reason is um, we wanted to um, uh, have you on was just, just talk about further about just the uh, layout. Sure. I think ideally um, there you are. But I hope some of my viewers that obviously saw obviously the interview from last week and kind of give you an idea as to like the visualization of where you've been, where you are, what your planned efforts are. Uh, obviously, we got a chance to see the uh, research and development facility, but most importantly, too, just some good uh, uh, technology comparisons compared to, say, like a, a leading industry leader like Quantumscape, which was uh, clearly outlined. But uh, um if you're sit sitting in front of an investor base that's interested in your company, what's the most important message that you want to share with them? It's the same message I, I usually bring up all the time is look at our result because yeah. the results matter. And if the results uh, uh, are, you know, if you, you review the results and, and you believe this is something you want to invest in, then it's your decision, right? right. I, I stand by our results and that's how we, uh, we conduct ourselves, you know, data, you know, experiment, you know, experimental tests yep. and, and making, you know, making leaps and bounds through testing and, and, and academic research. Yeah. Well, 
I think the big thing is just understanding what your background is and the companies that you've worked with. And I think last week, as you indicated in our interview, um, you think this is an opportunity within your career of a lifetime, as far as, you know, the technology that you're working with and the opportunity it presents, correct? Absolutely. This, uh, this is something that keeps, keeps me very motivated personally. Uh, yeah. I've gone through several launches of complete, uh, light electric vehicle powertrains. So this is, uh, just an additional task I do as a career, you know, accomplishment. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. And it sounds like it's very exciting. There's a lot of people interested in it. Uh, and we're very excited to see the next results that we get from our testing. Well, for people that aren't familiar with the space that are interested in learning about this, because let's face it, electric vehicles and everything associated with it is going to grow substantially across the world. Drones, where are drones going to be? Um, in the next five to 10 years. So if you're learning this space and more specifically about St. John Carbon, what is the message that you think this makes a uh, potentially a wise investment? And this is not investment advice, but why do you believe in this company if you're interested to invest uh, in, in St. John Carbon? Well, I think, you know, if I were to invest in something, I would look at the technology. And again, I keep going back to the results, you know, are the results viable? Is the technology viable? And if the answer is yes, then, you know, I, I would encourage people to make their decisions. But mm -hmm. that's how I look at, you know, when we acquired Solid Ultra Battery, those are the things I looked at and decided as a team that Solid Ultra Battery was a great acquisition for St. John Carbon. Mm -hmm. And I had looked at, you know, the technology. Is it so disruptive and is it so far out that, it may not be able to be launched successfully. Mm -hmm. um, does it seem to match and complement current technologies of today? You know, the answer in our view was yes, uh, that this, this technology is a good complement. Uh, is it fairly disruptive? I would say to a certain extent. I mean, if, if you launch something very, very disruptive, but there's quality issues or there's, there's risk, then that's not good either, right? Right. So... I would say from our analysis back in May of last year, this is a realistic acquisition that has, from what we see, a good chance of commercialization. Um, when we made that decision, we also had to look at the people involved. And right. Dr. Chen, as I mentioned earlier, he's you know, had over 400 publications in the industry. Uh, he, his work is well known in the battery industry, especially in the, the area that he focuses on, which is uh, solid, solid electrolyte separators. Mm -hmm. So there's no one on the planet that I know that uh, is as knowledgeable in solid electrolyte uh, technology as Dr. Chen. So you have to also look at, you know, the, the, the resources you have, right? Yeah. And the people and the, and the patents. So we've reviewed all of that. We've done a lot of due diligence. And uh, so you know, the technology, patents, applications, and commercializations and the people you associated with it is what's promising, obviously, for investors looking at this space. And then when you look, as you said, based on today's presentation, what your current technology is at and what this could translate, obviously, moving forward, which, you know, appears to obviously be promising. And uh, clearly, uh, as amongst uh, our viewers that watched this last week, there seems to be a very strong investing audience that is very interested in this story. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, listen, I appreciate your time. Um, I know we've had you in back-to-back -back weeks, but I wanted to follow up from last week's call. But uh, listen, let's keep in touch and uh, best of luck moving forward. That sounds great, Chad. Thank you. Thanks, Vibond. All right. Bye.